description is today. Hey guys, happy Monday. Today is Monday, May 6, 2019. Super excited. We have um, repeat offenders. God bless them. They're coming back. Uh, this is Andrea and Poonam next to me. So this is Andrea right here and Poonam over here. Um, we're here to talk about, that's why I'm wearing orange today. Orlando wear orange. We're going to talk about that. We're going we're gonna to talk about um, all of the efforts that they've put in since the last show. We're going to get the background on them. We're going to talk about why Orlando is going to wear orange on June 1st. Uh, so super excited to have them on the show. Let us know you can hear us and see us. Um, I'm sure you can definitely see me. Oh, Dallas, blessings to you too. So we have hearts. Uh, welcome, ladies. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Super excited to have you. I always am. Anytime you guys want to visit, you know you're welcome. I can't wait to hear more about this and how this came to be. Hey, Greg. Uh, so tell us a little bit about you. But tell, first, tell us why we're wearing orange, and then we're going to go back to that. But why am I wearing orange today, and why should I wear orange on June 1st? So since I have the wear orange shirt, <laughs> I'll, I'll answer that question. Please. But um, wear orange is a really amazing campaign that was started by um, some friends of a girl named Hadia Pendleton, who was in Chicago when she was shot and killed. Um, I believe she was about 15 years old. And, and so after that, her friends got together and decided to start a campaign called Wear Orange because orange was her favorite color and June 1st was her birthday. And so in honor of her, they, and now along with Moms Demand Action, have partnered in the last many years to uh, hold family-friendly, open events where people can come together and talk about gun violence and talk about um, the strides that we're making towards helping for gun safety and also honor the survivors um, that have been affected by gun violence. So we're wearing orange to bring that to light. National Gun Violence Awareness Day, June 1st, and to um, get together and, as a community from all sides, all walks of life. And just to not get it confused, I think that a lot, a lot of the country is, are actually doing it on June 7th, the mm -hmm. following weekend, but um, we have another event that we're participating in, the um, Community Rainbow Run, right? That we yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll be there. Um, amazing. But just, that, so if you see other events going on and say, oh, everyone seems to be doing it on this other weekend. Well, here in Orlando, we're doing it on June 1st so that we can, um, that we can participate in that. All right, so we're going to work backwards. Tell us about Mom, Moms Demand Action. All right, that's, that's me. Um, that's Andrea. <laughs> so I um, moved to Orlando in um, 20. 15 and I didn't know anybody um, but that's a whole nother story um, so I basically I had kind of got involved with this group called Moms Demand Action online when I was still living in um, New Jersey actually at the time oh that's right what part of Jersey again? I, well, I was in Bloomfield I, I, I don't like this I mean I basically grew I lived in the city for many years and then finally moved out and bought a house out in, in Jersey I was born in Bergen Bloomfield. County oh okay yeah yeah no I got gotcha. you Essex. Essex. Yeah, we were just, you know, on the quick line out, out so we can get into the city quickly, so <laughs> it was good. Um, but yeah, so I, uh, so, so the Sandy Hook shooting happened in Newtown, Connecticut in 2012, and I was just devastated by that. I, my daughter was two at the time, um, I was still living in New York, I was actually doing a show in the city, and I was in a dressing room with a bunch of um, girls, women, and um, we were literally reading the story as we're like getting ready for a show and just sobbing, all of us. And it was just, it was just really devastating. And I just started kind of becoming more aware. I just be started getting on my radar, just the epidemic of gun violence and that, that, that sort of thing. And so as that played out, I eventually found a group that was started by Shannon Watts um, called Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. So I got involved online, you know, did some things here or there, but didn't, didn't really do anything too, um, it wasn't too active in it. Um, so when I moved here, I actually got a text message saying that there was going to be a meeting here in Orlando um, because they didn't have a group here, like a local chapter. So I said, like, okay, you know, I'll, yeah, I'm going to go. I, I got I to gotta get out from behind the screen as, you know, the um, armchair activist. I it was them. time. It was time to get out and do something. So I uh, went to the meeting and somehow, <laughs> although I had no experience in this type of thing at all, I got coerced into um, leading the group, <laughs> the Orlando group. They like new they blood, did. Andrea. Yeah, they suck up. No. Um, so they, they, I basically uh, started the group from scratch and just tried to grab as many people to help me as I can. Like I said, I didn't really know anyone. So I just 
started putting myself out there. I did a couple of the Wear Orange events with the help of a couple of volunteers um, and sort of tried to make it happen. And then as the group started growing and, and like Poonam and some other wonderful people came on board, we've able, been able to grow the Wear Orange event every year. Um, but yeah, that's how I basically got started and it was just something I felt like I needed to get off the sidelines and do something and, and um, you know, it's one of those things where if no one else is going to do it, sometimes you just got to step up and do it whether you know what you're doing or not and um, because it just mattered that much to me and I was just, I was just heartbroken so, by, every, you know, all of the, the... So talk about that though. I mean, talk about how, uh, what you all actually do. So we've got, I know that, uh, I think a lot of people, they watch the show or they see the events like... Orlando Wear Orange, and then they wonder what happens during the rest of the year. Yep. So talk about the activism, talk about the advocacy that you all do, and what kind of work goes on behind the scenes, and what you're trying to accomplish. Well, I mean, a lot of it is legislative. So we were, you know, we had our big advocacy day up in uh, Tallahassee this year again, and we had, and we have multiplied in numbers. We keep just growing and growing. Um, this year we had nearly 500 people, 500 people from around the state came to Tallahassee in their wow. red mom shirt. I mean, it was huge because the year before it had been 200. You're growing. We were growing exponentially. So that's amazing. Our group, the amount of local groups we have around the state are growing. Um, so that's our main focus is because we want, you know, we feel like there needs to be a background check on every single gun sale. We feel that there are the, the red flag laws um, uh, need to be implemented. And, and, and some of the stuff that did actually happen after um, it did, after, yeah, which yeah, is amazing, yeah, right? Exactly, yeah. I love it. Marjorie yeah. Snowman Douglas, so that was that was a huge, huge plus for us. You because know, it's um, more than just awareness. So I think people go, oh, okay, so I'm aware of gun violence. Yeah. All right, so what do I do? What, what, what can I do? And because there's so much information out there, a lot of misinformation too, um, you've got all these sides everywhere and then people don't know how to uh, maneuver through the minutia of what side am I on, how do I get the real information. You guys really are trying to enact some legislation and have and trying to make a difference. It's not just about, okay, so gun violence is bad. Right. There, there's so much more to what you're doing, I think. And then, yeah. so tell us where you're trying to make your impact. After, after June 1st, um, you've got legislative, but you all also are active in the community. You do things, like you're doing something, you're participating on the 7th of June, uh, you're out there. It is about getting people to really think about it, right? Yeah, and I think one of the activities that I really like to is um, working with Harbor House. So that's our uh, community organization here that helps people that are dealing with domestic abuse and violence and One of my favorites. yeah and what we really are finding is that um, though the forefront for us sometimes in the media is um, the violence that's happening in our schools and the school shootings and that's a big issue that we're all very concerned about um, there's also been gun violence that's been happening in urban communities forever and right. with people that are oh. dealing with domestic violence that they're so many times more likely to be um, affected and be a victim of, of gun violence um, or a survivor of that and so one thing that's nice is we try to partner with those organizations so that we can learn more about what can be done when it comes to common sense gun laws and when it comes to awareness and when it comes to getting that word out for help for people and um, we recently went there and were able to just meet with some of the kids and do some craft activities with them and give the parents that were there a little bit of free time, a little bit of positive time sure. with their with their families. And so you really, when you get to do those types of things, you get to see the face of survivors and realize um, how close it is to us and how easily you could be in that situation. Um, I think a lot of our volunteers too are people that have had personal experiences um, or people like me that, um, I'm a mom and you don't have to be a mom to be moms, but I happen to be and I have a husband that's from Haiti and I have a son that is black and Indian and I know that he's 13 times more likely to be affected and be harmed by gun violence and so it's much more real. It becomes more real and but you really realize so that. So I, mm -hmm. I have a question. Back to Harbor House and then I want to ask mm -hmm. about your son. Um, so the reason why this stuff is important, it's not just so that the kids play arts and crafts. <laughs> um, where do you think some of these gunmen come from? Where do you think some of this violence comes from? So the reason why this impact, the reason why working with a group like Harbor House is so important is you, I don't know the 
stats, but I am 100% aware that um, if you grow up in a household where that is the norm or you've experienced it, the chances of you repeating it or being particip or participating in it just grow exponentially. So when you're when you go to the shelter, remember the the women and children are getting out from a bad situation, and men too, from a bad situation. You still have the you. They're all victims, so you still have that impact, that long term impact. So when this stuff comes out, when you see these kids who are taking out their high school. I mean, there are so many studies that have shown you go back to that, you go back to the history, and you've got some sort of violence in the household. Uh, so talk about your son. So people hear that stat, right? So people hear the stat, well, my son is um, he's 13 times more likely. Where does that come from and why? Because as a white man, mm -hmm. I'm not going to experience that. I'm obviously going to experience it 13 times less, right? <laughs> right. Uh, but people don't understand why that's significant. They think that you just hear it on an S SVU or a Criminal Minds or it's just on the news and that can't possibly be right. right. Talk about that. Well, I, what I know is um, that I won't experience it either, right? Because I'm a Indian American girl that was born in Atlanta, Georgia and grew up here and, and lived in a middle class home all my life. Um, and so really in meeting my husband, I started to understand this more. Um, he too has had an upbringing where um, he grew up in Pine Hills and he was from Miami and um, his father was very aware of just the everyday violence that was happening sure. in our communities around America and so much so that he was scared to have his kids be out and play and do things. So he used to go um, straight to the library every single day after school wow. and wait there and that was they weren't allowed to go anywhere else and do anything else because he, um, he knew the importance of education um, and opportunity to be able to um, move past some of those limitations that are put when you live in a community that is dealing with poverty and less accessibility to uh, to supports sure. and things like that. Um, and so also when you live in a place where when walking down the street can just be a danger and a risk to your own life or um, yeah, right. or driving down um, and having a tail light that's broken and what's going to happen when you get pulled over, are you just going to um, be given a ticket for that or for something else. So I think that that has really been brought to light in my my life now to see that for my son, though he, we don't live in uh, a predominantly uh, low or socioeconomic status, uh, place um, or urban place right now that's dealing a lot with a lot of that every day as we walk down the street. But for me, my son, I know that if he's of a certain age and walking down the street, um, he could possibly be uh, seen as threatening or not meant to be there and all those types of things no matter what who we are and what education he has and what he's doing and so I just have to be realistic about that and know that he has to learn how to stay safe and um, how to make sure that he is not a victim of that gun violence. So talk about um, what's going on on June 1st. So talk, I know we're all gonna wear orange, but are we, is there an event going on? Are we promoting across the schools? Or what are you doing? Because as you know, I don't do really any research, so I love the flyer. Um, and I knew to wear orange, that's why you guys are here. So tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, she, you, you're sort of in charge of the event, so yeah. I'll let you, I'll let you. Well, along with uh, Shana, so I'm one of the, which I didn't mention before, um, one of the co-lead volunteers for the Orlando uh, group of Moms Demand Action. Um, and so this is the second year that I'm helping, getting help from Shana and how we're helping each other to put on this event. And so this is our little flyer, which I know you can't see here, but um, we posted Ted has it. posted it for us, so that's great. So basically, this is a great event if you are concerned about this cause and you wanna kind of meet people that are talking about this, but in a positive, family-friendly environment where you can bring your kids. A lot of times people wanna do things, you can't bring your kids. So this is great, it's at, at Gaston Edwards Park on June 1st from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And like I said, it's a free family friendly event that is really focused on celebrating some of the strides that have been made and honoring survivors 
Um, so we'll do that by having a DJ and having some speakers. Uh, we have Brandon Wolf coming from the Drew Project and um, awesome. so somebody from uh, the Orlando Sheriff's Department and uh, some other speakers that, that really know what's going on in our community. So we'll be able to hear from them, but also student, kids will be able to be in the photo booth and uh, bounce houses and there'll be food trucks and arts and crafts. So we can kind of gather as a community and say, hey, we are from all different walks of life, all different spectrums, and we kind of believe in this and we wanna talk about what we can do. Um, so if you wanna to come to that, again, Saturday, June 1st, 10th Is that the park near Baldwin Park, right? No. No, this Where's is this um, one? on North Orange. So right by the Hammered Lamb North across 50. the street. Oh there. yes, I love that park. It's yeah. right yeah, it's right on yeah, it's on Orange, yeah, across from Hammered Lamb. Hammered Lamb. Right, yeah. So you can come there, you next can next to Mesa twenty one. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right yes. next to Mesa twenty one. We'll be right there. Um and so we would love to have you. And if you can't come, there's also um if you search the event on Facebook, there's a public event, Orlando Wear Orange twenty nineteen. You can also text 64433. You can text events to 64433. Um, what you can find there is we have other things going on, like a really amazing silent auction. So say you can't come to the event, or you can, but you want to support the cause, all of the proceeds will go back to the event. Wait, so 64433, you can, that gives you access to the event, so it tells you about it, and then talk about the silent auction, because this audience is a big silent uh -huh. auction group. So yeah, where really. can they go to look up that if they can't make it to the event? Right, yes, exactly. So 64433 is the number for Moms Demand Action. So if you want to get involved in general, um, you can text READY, uh, to 64433 or events for to find out about the specific event. But um, if you also search on Facebook, if you're here, we know you have a Facebook account. So that is true. Check uh, Orlando. <laughs> Who is Beth orange. Rothwell? She must work with you guys. Yes. She's awesome. <laughs> I, everything she's everything she's we talk about, it. she's like aren't on you, it. Aren't you working? Yay, Beth. Beth, you're amazing. <laughs> However, whatever you're she's doing. She's on our social media for the, the mom. You're, you're awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. awesome. She's on it. So, Andrew, yeah. you've been so quiet. Well I, well, I don't know. It just sort of, this is how it's flowed. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> how is it? Does it become, for you two, does it become sometimes, a, obviously you have a passion for it, but do you, it, does it become overwhelming sometimes? Because there's so much work to do, and every time you make a step forward, you've got some craziness in the news that just is heartbreaking for all of us. Yeah, but you know what? I mean, well, I have a couple things to say about that. The first one is that, yes. Yeah. To all of that, um, it, it can be absolutely heartbreaking. I mean, especially when you get you get pulsed and then you get martyred so much less and you're just like, oh my. And then of course you're hearing news about, you know, um, Las Vegas and this. I mean, I remember because you know for the first couple of years, I I was the chapter lead for about two and a half years in the chapter lead, the the local group lead here in Orlando for about two and a half years. I've actually since passed it on to. Uh, two very wonderful volunteers, Adrian and Danielle, who are now co-leads, because after two and a half years, uh, it, it, it did become a little bit much for me um, to do and try to balance everything. So I sure. said, you know, I'm gonna step back, let these, I have this wonderful team of people that are on board now and things are running kind of smoothly. I said, have at it, They've, they're amazing. So I've just been able to show up whenever <laughs> I can show up and it's been awesome. So like I'm still very show. involved and, <laughs> and do everything that I possibly can. But then I'm also, um, this issue has gotten me um, very involved, you know, interested in politics in general. So I've actually, I'm, I'm uh, working for uh, Commissioner Myra Uribe as a uh, part-time agent for Are you? Congratulations. So trying to learn a little bit about how government works, local government and things like that. So I'm just sort of um, putting putting everything out there and seeing, I'm not sure exactly what direction well, I'm Because once but, you get that activism and advocacy in your yeah, blood, yeah. it's very hard to step back completely. Yes, yes. You have to figure out how to progress. Right, and where to, where and you and where fit to go the, and what's the impact yeah. you can make. Right, exactly. So I'm I'm feeling at, out some different things and um, but still just this is this is a cause that obviously is just really near and dear. So I just I keep keep going with it and um, and then doing that as well, and then you know just trying to branch out and get involved in the other issues that are important to me as well. But um, awesome. but yeah, it can it can be it can be because <laughs> we're all volunteers. You know we uh, not as a, you know, we all have families that. and jobs and and things like that. So um, the the kind of commitment that my you know this this group of women have, I'm just always astounded by. I'm like you know some of them it's just. It's amazing. I, I love, and anybody who's in advocacy or activism, I think people do think 
well, God, they must be paid. Look, there are some high paid people. I get it, right? We're not one of them. They're <laughs> not one of them. And most people who, well, I'd say everybody who comes on the show, I've never had a paid activist or advocate on the show. I'd be fascinated to interview them, though. <laughs> um, but I think it's so important for you all to know that when yeah. people are out there and they're putting they're putting their life into this mission, into this work, they're passionate about it, we have to be respectful of it. And I'm sure you guys get hit with a lot of stuff sometimes where it's not so, so respectful. Uh, social media is a blessing in some ways because it's certainly, uh, with videos and stuff, it's brought the forefront to the things that uh, our urban communities have been talking about for a long time which is the violence against them and so much stuff that goes on. It's been a blessing in that way, but it can also be a curse. It can be very challenging because you have people, it's social media, you have people who are opinionated and go, you guys are idiots for this, I've seen it. Not just on, not on your page, but in general. Yeah. Why would you do this? What is this gonna do? Our country, Amendment 2, I don't even wanna get into that right, right. now. Yeah. But you know, you have that whole discussion and instead of having an adult cons uh, discussion, you get into this place where you're like, okay, well, I can't respond to that. I You're learned that it, it took me a, a, a couple months of sort of a job, like you know where you want to get into it with everybody and then I was like this is this is what's not productive me getting out there putting on these events you know going up to Tallahassee that's productive you know but sitting and arguing with some person it's very know, hard because you take it not, so personally you yeah, take you the issues personal yeah. and then you're like why are you attacking me yeah social media can be a very hard place but what you're saying Andrea is you just have to step back remember that person I think you think they represent what everybody's thinking, but they don't. And they're so just, just the let them, they're the loudest right person now. in the room. You know those people, <laughs> trust me. Uh, so you want to just kind of let that go. And I try to tell all of my advocates and activists, like, I know you want to just, ah, uh, you well, want to strangle that's not how you really somebody. change people's mind. You, you know, it's like, you what are you going to get an argument on Facebook? And then, and then everybody else is oh, watching you, you know, yeah. and how you yeah. respond. Right. They're going to judge, and they're not judging that person. You know who they're judging? You. Mm -hmm. And so it's so much better for you to be a, an example of that. Yeah. I'm not saying it's easy because we're human and emotions get in it. Go find a friend, a cocktail, prayer, whatever it is that you do, and meditate, yes. And then let it go and remember you're doing the right thing, which right. is what you guys are doing. Yeah, rather focus the energy in that positive way. And yeah. there, it, we all need it. There, there, yeah. there's, mm -hmm. there's, there's so many positive things that you all are doing, and so you have to be able to focus that. Right. Um, all right, so am I missing anything? We've got June 1st. Any uh, parting words of wisdom for them? Anything you want to share before we head out? We're going to share again the June 1st event. Uh, at Gaston Edwards Park, right? Correct. Um, and we're going to share that and what you can do, how you get involved in Moms Demand Action, how you can get involved in Orlando Wear Orange, whatever it is that you want to get involved with. I encourage you to get involved. Uh, so anything you want to share with them before we head out? Well, just quickly, that the one thing that um, we're still pushing right now, which is unfortunately probably not going to be successful, but, <laughs> um, but the uh, SB 7030 uh, recently passed. And basically, it is um, allowing for the opt uh, school district to opt in to arming teachers, which we are very against. Uh, we are we support the SRO, so veteran the schools, and um, you know that's their job. Their job, their police officers, they're there to protect the, the kids and the teachers and that you know. Passed. Admin. Okay, talk up just for a second. So my yeah. wife's a teacher. Talk, so that passed. It passed. So now here's the deal, though, that the school boards have to opt into that thing. So Orange County has already said no. What a blessing. Orange County has come out and Thank said you. absolutely County, not. Seminole. The majority, Seminole yes. County, actually Lake County, Lake County, surprisingly, said that they wouldn't arm teachers because they already have some um, guardians that are armed, which are not teachers, but they're not SRO officers. They're people within the school, other positions within the school that have taken the training to be armed. The problem with it, there's so many problems with army teachers. I don't but, even know where to go with yeah, it. Yeah, but the, the you know. Do you the, have any teachers wanted to even, kill me in a, on a daily basis? Look, right. you're talking about human beings who are teaching yes. our youth, our children. Yes. And Why would high you school want? students, oh, people, you know, no. we know that people. But, um, but you, they weren't even going to, they don't, they weren't planning on telling. You wouldn't even be able to know which teachers had it, which, you know, this would all be secret. But, um, um, yes. So basically, what we're doing is that we know that the majority, there's a majority of counties, I think, actually in Florida that are not opting into this. The ones that do decide to do it, we will take the fight to the school boards, which is Good. what we've been doing all along, trying to convince them because the legislator didn't, legislature didn't listen to us. We had all the data. We had law enforcement, teachers, parents, students, 
I mean, everybody's against this, you know, proposal, but the legislature, you know, the NRA is very powerful. So they were able to pass that, that bill. So now um, the last ditch effort is that DeSantis would veto it, which probably won't happen. But if you feel like texting um, Florida. I see it. Beth just put it. 6443. Text veto SB 730. Yeah, 730. Uh, yeah. So please. That's like, so that's the, those are the, these are the kinds of efforts that we do because you know, we, 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 it's just, it just, it just doesn't even, it just, it just make sense. doesn't even make sense. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. All right. So we're going to share that information too. Trust me, all of the stuff that they're, that Andrea and Poonam are sharing, we're going to share it after the show. We'll put it in writing so you can find the text message. You can find their website. You can find the information about the June 1st event. Um, I can't believe that passed. <sighs> All right, Flora. <laughs> so we're taking a deep taking breath. Taking a deep breath, and yeah, this is where the active is. Yeah, yeah really... it's been a challenge on so many levels. But listen, I want you all to get involved, whether it's with this, which I think is so important. Um, something, get involved, because your voice is so important, too. 2020. Yes, <laughs> yes 2020. please, 2020. please. Vote. Oh, yeah, we got to vote. vote. So, all right, you guys, are a, you guys are a joy always to have on the show. I'm so thankful to have you here. Love to wear you. Orlando, wear orange June 1st, uh, 64433, which Beth has put all of that information on there, but we're going to share it again. Get involved, get involved, please. Yes, Vic, you're right. Lots of stuff. They're gonna to respond to all of the questions. There's a lot of questions that went sure. back up and down there. Yeah. Uh, after the show, um, ask a million, please. We're gonna share it everywhere, so definitely reach out to them if you have questions or you wanna get involved in Moms Demand Action or um, Orange uh, Orlando Wear Orange yep. Day on We're June orange. 1st. All right, we love you guys. <laughs> Mwah. Thank you guys for being on here. My pleasure. Get involved, people. It's important, so important. Love you.